Welcome to Veterans in Transition, where we promote the veteran community. I'm proud to be part of this project because I've got two sons entering the military as we speak. In each episode, we profile a diverse group of women and men who are transitioning from their respective ranks in the military back to civilian life, finding employment, entrepreneurship, and another opportunity for them to give back to the community. Veterans in Transition is sponsored by Data Solutions and Technology Incorporated, Digital Conventions, and the Village Connector Community. In Prince George's County alone, there are 2,700 identified unemployed veterans. Hundreds of veterans came out to the Prince George's County Economic Development Corporation as they celebrated Veterans Day by hosting a Veterans Job and Resource Fair. The concept behind this event was to address the issue of unemployment within the veteran community. You've got a very special initiative going on Absolutely. right now called Operation 500. Yes. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Operation 500 is committed to our veterans. Those who've served us, we're going to serve them. My father served in World War II and just about every day in my life when he was living, he told me about what he did over in Italy and how the country came together and how you had young men and young women who were fighting against you know, our enemies and to save the country. And so I have a strong belief in being able to care for those who've cared for us and that have protected us. We right now in our county, we have about 2,800 veterans who are unemployed. We have 2,100 veterans who are living in poverty. And that's unacceptable when you have $10 billion of projects that are in pipeline. We've got a brand new casino that's opening right now that's going to create 3,600 new jobs. We're looking good at being able to have a brand new hospital that's going to create thousands of medical jobs. The FBI is seriously taking a look at bringing its headquarters out here. There will be 11,000 jobs. Altogether, we've got about 25,000 jobs that are open here in the county. And so for me, that's unacceptable for one veteran in our county who wants to work to be unemployed. And so we launched a campaign called Operations 500 because over the next six months, we want to put 500 of those 2,800 veterans to work in good, high-wage jobs. They deserve it, and we're going to do everything in our power to be able to stand for them like they stood for us in Iraq and Afghanistan and other parts of the world to be able to get them the employment they deserve to have so they can take care of themselves, take care of their families, be able to buy a home, and to be able to enjoy the great things that are going on in this county and the region. Walter Simmons and the rest of my team, they've done a fantastic job of bringing in 27 companies today that have real jobs. We've got about 500 openings down there. It's been a good experience so far. We'd certainly like to have more opportunities to do things like this. Uh, simply running ads in the paper and putting line, you know, on Craigslist online doesn't really give us the good response we're looking for. So to have people come in who are actually looking to come, you know, be employed is a big deal for us. It makes a big difference. We wanted to support this great effort because we want to bridge the gap between our veterans coming out of service, retiring, and then also have them, um, you know, give them the opportunity to continue the skill set that they have built. You know, I think one thing that is consistent across the board is we're looking for employees who um, take pride in what they do and have a commitment to great customer service. Civilian employment doesn't speak in military terms. We need to translate that into what the civilian workforce, what those skills are. We have what's called veterans priority of service. So when a veteran comes in the door, uh, they get priority of service, which means they literally go to the head of the line. You know, a lot of times talking to peers of mine who are already out of the military, or people who are going through the transition process, you know, a lot of times later they found out that they're fully qualified for a position, but they didn't target their resume and capture the skills, many of which the, a lot of uh, private organizations seek, like teamwork, commitment, responsibility. I have so two people actually said um, they gave me their card and said email them that they think they may have a slot for me. So I'm hoping in a couple of weeks I should be working. I'm excited. So Rob, you have a very special purpose for participating in Operation 500 today because your organization actually helps veterans get established in the trades. My main directive is to reach out to the injured community to let them know that construction is a viable industry for them. You know, don't discount it because of whatever injury it is you think you have. Now you also said that all of the folks that are with Helmets to Hard Hats are also former veterans themselves, is that right? Yes sir, we have three veterans in D.C and our person in Chicago, he's a trades person, California is a veteran, so we really like that because you know, we're taking care of each other, we're taking care of our brothers and sisters that we served with in the past. Now we heard in another interview earlier today that there are over 2,800 veterans here in Prince George's County that are unemployed and 2,100 living at the poverty level. 
I suspect that a big challenge for them is that they don't know about your organization. No, they don't. And we're small, and that's why we try to come to these events and network with people to make them aware of what's going on. There's unemployed, but then we also like to talk about the underemployed. You know, and those are the people that are kind of not in a career choice, but they're just going to do a job every day. And what's important for us in this industry here is for the large projects that are going on, the construction progress, this is all local hires. You know, we're helping the veterans in our community find these careers. Prince George's County Economic Development Corporation Workforce Services Division took the initial step to show that we're engaging this effort by uh, hiring our first veteran, uh, Ronald Hopkins, to our business services team. I attended the last veterans job fair last month. I circulated my resume. I talked to everybody and anybody, and I got received a telephone call a couple of weeks later. They called me in for an interview, and here I am. I solicit jobs from area businesses, and my area of expertise is healthcare and IT. It's very good to have these type of job fairs targeted primarily for veterans. I've never experienced that before, and it's also amazing to see the number of veterans looking for employment in all the different career fields. So I think it's a great initiative. Um, I'm very thankful because now I, I have a full-time job and I'm open to spread the word so others can take advantage of this opportunity. In this segment, we hear from Stacy Redmond, President and CEO of Strategy Management Services, also known as SAMS, as Ms. Redmond shares her knowledge in Redmond's rules. Learning to lose. Have you ever had to overcome a disappointment like losing a bid? What were your takeaways or lessons learned to ensure that those same factors were not repeated in future efforts? What were your tools used to overcome obstacles? It's not just about learning from your mistakes, but being willing to lose graciously without complaining. If you made a good impression with the client, maybe the next time a contract comes around, they'll think of you first. You can't win everything, right? Plan for it, but make sure you know how to lose graciously too. Retired military officer and independent consultant, Dr. James Dula, had a chance to talk to Dr. Madeline Lewis, President and CEO of the Executive Women's Success Institute on the subject of leadership. Well, I can see you've had a very, very interesting uh, uh, career mm -hmm. in, in several different areas. Mm -hmm. uh, first being a Sergeant Major uh, from the United States Army, been retired from the FBI. Yes. And now you're the CEO, President and CEO of the uh, Women's Success in business mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and you're still helping and you're still giving back. Mm -hmm. uh, what made you uh, want to be a person uh, that, that, that wants to give back to our community? Well, I tell you what, I feel like if you're going to live in a community, you should be involved. And being involved means just that. You get out and you serve on different committees or you work with um, different organizations and you, you know, just find out as much as you can to, to, to stay involved with your community. Uh, again, I love working with women, so a lot of uh, organizations that I do tend to get involved with, they tend to also focus on women. Uh, for example, I'm a part of the WE3 um, Women's Empowerment Committee, um, so I, uh, every year they have a conference, so I work with them. I've worked with them now for the last five years. I'm also a part of the Federally Employed Women's Organization, so you know, I, I tend to get involved with a lot of women's organization. And again, because um, to me, women are the ones that I feel the most passionate with in helping. What did you do in the Army to, uh, to be exact? Well, when I started out, I started out as an E3 and uh, I was an admin. And uh, from there, I just progressed until I, I reached the rank of uh, Sergeant Major. But I've had, I had several different positions within the military. Uh, I was in transportation unit. Uh, that was very interesting, being, you know, driving those big old deuce and a half oh, trucks. Yeah. So that, that was really interesting there when um, not only did you get to drive them, but you also had to know how to service those vehicles too to make sure that whenever you turn the key over, they, they would work. Um, I was also uh, civil affairs, which that's um, one of the, the um, places that I spent a lot of time, civil affairs unit. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, we were attached, our civil affairs unit was attached to the 82nd Airborne. Uh, so we had to train the same way that they trained, meaning that, you know, you had to do the jumping out of the plane, you had to be able to swim with you in full gear. We did, you know, everything uh, uh, the 82nd Airborne did, we had to know how to do it too because um, even though we were civil affairs, we still, most of the time when we went into a uh, country or what have you, we would go in along, sometimes along with them. When I ended, uh, my last station was at Fort Belvoir, and I was the commandant at the 81st uh, training unit, and I had 80 soldiers under my direct command. They were all, um, these soldiers were instructors, actually, and what they did, they taught the Army's um, advanced, uh, basic and advanced leadership courses. So I had three sites that I was also responsible for. Um, uh, one was in Delaware, the other one was in uh, Pennsylvania, and then the other was in uh, West Virginia. Since you left the military, you started your own business. Yes, I did. Um, I have the Executive Women's Success Institute. During my career, and military career and civilian career, I always had women coming to me, wanted to know, you know, how I got to uh, move up the way I did, how I got into certain positions that I got into. And so they would ask me to mentor them, they would ask me to look at their um, packages, their um, resumes, and, and sometimes um, uh, do mock interviews with them. And because of that, it just made me want to do this uh, because I could help them. It, wanted, it made me want to do it on a larger scale to help be able to help more women. And because of that, I started my organization so that women would have a place to be able to come for professional uh, development training, to learn uh, the skills that they need to have to get from point A to point Z. Uh, I have a program I call the Eight Habits of Highly Successful Women that I put women through to uh, show them or, or teach them some of the skills they may need uh, if they want to be executives or if they want to be CEOs of their own businesses. I often like to look at the, the, the skills that are required in the military and then look at the civilian life yes. and, and compare the same skills. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, military skills uh, helped you uh, in the civilian world to uh, develop the ideas and the programs that you have developed? I would say the, for me it was the leadership skills. When I, um, in the military, once, as I said, I came in as a E3 and progressing up, you know, as you go up the rank, uh, when you get to an E5, you have a, maybe one or two soldiers that's below you that you're supposed to be able to show things to, show the ropes to. But if you don't know, how can you show someone else? And that's the thing. Um, to me, it was the leadership skills and being able to uh, always stay up in my particular field, in my industry. And I, I think I'm one of those people that read a lot that also take a lot of advice. You know, I, I, I don't mind people giving me advice. I don't mind asking for help. And I think those are the skills that you need if you're gonna progress up the ladder as a leader. I mean, because once you get there, you can't think you know everything because you don't. There are still things that you need to learn. And so uh, for me, the military, again, was great for the discipline. And I'm not talking about you know, don't touch this or don't touch that. I'm talking about the discipline of your mind, the discipline of your character, the discipline of knowing um, doing, that you're doing the right thing and that's the thing that you do. And so when I talk about leadership, these are the things that I'm talking about, making sure that you're on the right path and you're doing the right thing. But not only that, you're also bringing someone up, else up with you into that leadership role because as you, uh, as a leader, you're supposed to also be bringing uh, others up and showing them how to lead also. I'm looking at your lapel pen and it says attitude is everything? Yes. Okay, and that's absolutely uh, a true statement. <laughs> uh, attitude uh, should play a part in everything we, we do. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you're right, we learned that type of uh, uh, mentality from our military 
uh, up, upbringing, mm -hmm. and we carry it forward into our civilian life. I'm sure that there's, there's many lessons others can learn from you in reading your works, mm -hmm. uh, and we look forward to staying in touch with you. Thank you. For all you car enthusiasts, we travel to Charles County, Maryland for the 10th annual Town of Indian Head Car Show and Veterans Recognition Day, sponsored by Indian Head Baptist Church and the American Legion Post 170. Veterans in Transition was able to pick three of the top categories won by veterans. Here are their stories. Well, I got out of the Army and uh, started taking college classes. That was my intention. And uh, a friend of mine was in the Air National Guard unit. He invited me to come along. And uh, uh, so I liked what I saw, so I joined them. And uh, that was five years. It was a good time but down in uh, Camp Blanding, Florida. And then the opportunity came up to go active Air Force, and I jumped on that. This is actually my wife's vehicle that I'm just lucky enough to ride around in every once in a while. My car is a 1955 uh, Chevrolet Townsman station wagon, and her name is Betty, named after my mom. It's a straight inline six engine, and it's got original in, um, interior. It's pretty much original everything. It does have new paint on it. It's our cruiser. We take it to the grocery store, to antique stores. We just take her everywhere. She runs like a top. My special interest in this particular car is it has beautiful taillights, and I love the color. Um, when I got with Jody, he was into the classic cars, and so I decided I needed one too. And so I got the prettiest one of all the ones we have. So, <laughs> you know she is. Yeah. <laughs> and, no, really, it's, uh, it's, it's been lowered a little bit. Uh, it's been switched over to an automatic transmission. Um, there's no air, so it's just the uh, the windows down, the vent windows blowing that air in on us. Feels pretty good, the cooler months anyway. I was a machinist mate. We worked on diesel engines. We called them Siamese twins. Small LLCs, which is a light lift craft, were powered by diesel engines. So what our job was, was to keep those engines repaired, whether it be in the Philippines or whether it would be in Vietnam. The advantage of me being a machinist mate was you learn the technical aspects of machinery. You learn how to take an engine apart, you learn the different functions of an engine, and you decide at that point whether you want to do that as a career or not. But because the, the Navy trained me and I felt confident with the training, I decided to get my degree in business management. And from that job, I was able to excel in the federal government. I went from a machinist made in the Navy to a procurement analyst for GSA. In 1969, when that Camaro came out, I looked at it. I was high school, just out of high school. I told myself, one day, I'm gonna buy that 69 Camaro. I thought about it, dreamt about it, and tried to find one until I retired from the federal government. 36 and a half years later, I bought that Camaro. Now the advantage was I took a white piece of paper and I wrote down everything I wanted. I wanted a 350 cubic inch engine, I wanted a three-speed transmission, and I wanted a turnkey. That means that the car would start. I put a cam in it, uh, I put um, uh, headers on it, uh, intake manifold and an Elevrock 4 uh, barrel carburetor and a new aluminum radiator. I have started and belong to DMV, District Maryland Virginia Cruiser. That's a car club. Our car clubs, we basically go to churches and community affairs, although we do go to car shows. But we have a family-oriented car show that caters to younger people who are trying to get into a hobby, but we try to bring along the young people and anything that involved with community affairs is what, is what we mainly try to cater to. We're not that concerned about uh, car shows per se, but we like the camaraderie, we like the networking of, of the groups of good people get together, tell good stories about good events. I was uh, mechanized infantry overseas, went to all the schools for mechanics, tank mechanic is what I was, and uh, served my three years and served my three years inactive and got out. Because I was young at the time, I, I was uh, only 20 when I had, uh, got out of the Army, so 
I was still, uh, I guess you'd call it green as far as the civilian world. I was always interested in cars, even when I, my dad was a mechanic. So I grew up around it. I was his uh, helper, he called it. But I called it doing all the dirty work. So, you know, but it taught me a lot and it kept me in the profession and wanted me, you know, it got me to want to be a mechanic. It's a 56 Chevrolet Bel Air, two door hard top, which you don't, uh, they're kind of rare. You don't see a whole lot of hard tops. You see a whole lot of posts. Uh, I redid all the suspension. It's a ground up restoration. It's got a stock frame, two piece frame, uh, disc brakes in the front. It's a 383 stroker motor with a 700R4 transmission and a uh, 391 nine inch Ford rear end. We like to go on weekends and just drive everywhere and anywhere. Everything inside has been refurbished or reconditioned if you want to call it, or brand new. It's, it's called uh, vintage burgundy metallic. It's a Ford color, but if you notice, you can't notice it right now, but I had him put a, a dusting of gold flake in with the metallic. So it's got to be burgundy and gold. Got to be. Why is that? Well, the Redskins, naturally. I've uh, been a Redskin fan all my life. Season tickets since 66. Matter of fact, I had season tickets for three years before I went to see one game due to my service uh, time. I like it. I like driving it. I like uh, cruising around in it with the windows down. In our next story, senior military correspondent Jim Benson caught up with West Point graduate, Bronze Star and Purple Heart recipient, Tom Deerline, who is also a serial entrepreneur. Tom is the co-founder and CEO of Thundercat Technology and the founder of the TD Foundation. He was recently named Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year in the greater Washington area. So what do uh, Sam Walton, Dave Thomas, Barry Gordy, Fred Smith, and Charles Walgreen have in common? The founders of Walmart, AOL, Wendy's, who doesn't love Wendy's, Motown Records, Walgreens, FedEx, they were all veterans that went on to found a business after their service to the nation. So I don't care whether you've served 20 plus years or just a couple, whether you've had multiple combat tours or just, uh, or none. Trust me when I tell you, if you are a veteran, you have what it takes to not only survive, but thrive in the business world. One of the things I wanted to ask right away was what motivated you to uh, start Thundercat Technology? Well, actually I was approached by uh, four folks that had the idea originally. And throughout my career, I'd always been at smaller and smaller companies, and this was a unique opportunity to be a co-founder of an organization. So I really jumped at the chance and, and committed and went for it. There was two transition periods from a military to civilian uh, work set. How were they different, other than uh, the injury recovery that you had to go through from your traumatic injury after being recalled to uh, Baghdad? De definitely night and day. Um, so I'll start with the first one and talk about the latter. My first transition, when I was 13, I decided I want to go to West Point. And I was like, I'll go to West Point, go in the military for five years, and then get out and become a successful corporate business executive. I didn't know what that was, you know. My dad got in the train in the morning, he came back, there was food on the table. I didn't really know and understand what business was. So when I was 25 years old, I was executing on the plan made by a 13-year-old boy. And I got out of the military and I went into sales for Johnson & Johnson. It was a difficult two years. I'm not going to lie because I was 17 when I went in the military. Eight years later, my entire adult life was in a military environment, a military culture, and I was always part of a team. When you're a sales rep, you're an army of one. And so I was living, you know, by myself. I, everyone I was meeting with or talking to were prospects or clients. I only saw my teammates two, three times a year. I saw my boss three, four times a year. It was a very lonely, difficult transition, not only personally, but professionally. Your group, uh, Thundercat Technology, is known for its philanthropy, and uh, you, you help so many organizations, both the youth uh, that you saw in, uh, in Iraq, and as well as those of the fallen heroes. Uh, thank you for asking that question. We do take pride in the work that we're doing, giving back to the community. 
Um, as you know, we, we were a finalist with Fairfax County in, in the social corporate responsibility. Um, TD Foundation, as you mentioned, is one that I co-founded. We do a lot of, we used to do a lot of work with kids in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now about 95% of our work is with the children of wounded warriors or Gold Star families, children who have lost a, a parent in, in combat. In terms of other mentoring opportunities that I do, I work a lot with Commit, which Commit Foundation, which helps veterans in transition. In terms of helping uh, military veteran families, we work with uh, our code of support, uh, Operation Second Chance, uh, Quality of Life Foundation, uh, and a handful of, oh, our military kids, another local group here. It, it's, it's not meant to be this giant thing. We're trying to help one child, one family at a time. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Veterans in Transition, and we welcome your feedback. You may reach us at www.vetsintransition.com. Until next time, to all of our veterans, wherever you may be, we salute you. that getting things done is a skill. There's plenty of people that struggle with projects or struggle with seeing things through. Military folks don't struggle with that as much.